G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. I'm joined once again by Joyce Meister uh, down in Bunbury and uh, we're going to go through Joyce's 28 or 2019 um, AFL Finals predictions. Joycey, how you doing? Yeah, pretty good. Thanks, Jesse. What about yourself? Oh yeah, yeah. Seen better days, seen better days. The Eagles uh, got got pumped in round 23, so um, yeah. I, uh, I wish I could take a break from football to, to sort of mourn the uh, the top four going begging, but uh, alas, I have a footy channel, so nowhere to hide. Not much time to get over it either. You've only got till Thursday night, and um, you've got an elimination final, so yeah, that's true. It could happen. Yeah, as you can probably guess, I want to talk to you, Joycey, about your predictions for the upcoming finals. But before we get into that, uh, there's a couple of questions I want to ask you because this time of year, everyone forgets about the bottom 10 and maybe rightfully so. But just quickly, uh, who do you think out of the bottom 10 teams that didn't make the finals would probably be their ha- would be the happiest with their season? Second half of the season, Carlton, you've got to say, uh, really came along well. They made really good strides in 2019. I don't know how many games David Teague won. I know it was over 50%. Things are looking up there. I think they've got a fairly well-balanced list. I think they're not just relying on Pat Cripps now. They've got some really good young midfielders coming through, a couple of good forwards. They're probably the ones that would be most happy with their season, yeah. Yeah, nice one. I think uh, there's that their famous trade as well Carlton did with Adelaide last year. Um, that turned out to be pick three this year for eight this year and Liam Stocker. So um, I actually think Carlton did pretty well out of that. Yeah, I tend to think I used to probably favour the higher draft pick and last few years actually I've more probably swung around to thinking I'd prefer two late first rounders to a high first rounder. That's just my thoughts, I think. It's a generally a bit of a safer option. Yeah, I do actually agree with that. What about your team that do you think would be the most concerned with their season out of all the teams that missed the finals? Look, this one's going to be a two-way tie. Couldn't split two teams. So one of those teams is the Gold Coast Sun. First, maybe four or five rounds, everyone thought, oh, they've managed to turn things around a bit. But yet again, at the end of the season, I don't know how many games they lost in a row. Quite a lot, I think. But 18. 18, so there you go. You know, it's just not good enough. I really don't know where where to go with Gold Coast. It's almost like it feels like it just will never get better at the moment. They do look like they're about to sign Sean Burgoyne. I mean, it's an okay signing for that. Much respect to Sean Burgoyne. He's a great player, but, you know, signing Sean Burgoyne is, is not going to turn Gold Coast around. Second team, the Melbourne Demons. So their 2018 was pretty good. I think a lot of people thought they were the club on the rise. Myself included, I probably fancied them to go uh, top four this year. So many things have gone wrong for the Melbourne Demons this year. It's sort of like they just got off to a bad start and just couldn't shake it. Last year, I looked at their list and I thought, wow, they're really balanced lists. Like they've got great plays in the forward line, midfield, back line. And I don't know, now all of a sudden I'm thinking, hmm, the forward line doesn't quite seem to be working. Maybe Wiedemann and McDonald aren't quite as good forwards as we thought. The midfield isn't quite as deep either as I thought it was. Um, You know, Viney, Angus Brayshaw, all these guys who are probably rated quite highly last year, you know, they haven't really done much this year. There's been a lot of 20 disposal games from those guys. Interesting, I, I have heard a theory, Angus Brayshaw might be playing on the outside because of his concussion, which would make sense. There's just a lot of players that have had a big drop off at Melbourne and big cause for concern as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, no, I think those are all pretty sound nominations. So we'll get into the finals though, mate. So I'm going to rattle off the games as they come and I'm going to try and keep it all in my head. But um, first up, what do you think about Geelong and Collingwood? Geelong and Collingwood, well, you know, this has the potential to be the match of the round, I think. It's really hard to split these two teams. You know, you, you, you do have to feel for Geelong supporters being made to play the MTG. i got a funny feeling Collingwood are actually going to get up. All right, what about Brisbane versus Richmond at the Gabba? Brisbane, Richmond at the Gabba, another, another tough one. I was actually pretty impressed with Brisbane at the MCG. I know they weren't super close to Richmond, but I don't know. I think if a few things had have gone their way, I think they had a bad start and quite couldn't recover from that. But once once they got their legs, they, they didn't look too bad. I'm actually going to say Brisbane up at the Gabba for this one. What about West Coast and Essendon at Optus Stadium on Thursday night? You know, West Coast, a couple of 
um, probably confidence battering losses in the last couple of weeks, but I'm relatively confident that they will be able to get up and beat Essendon. Got to admit, I was pretty impressed by Essendon on Friday night against Collingwood. But um, I think Eagles will get the chocolates in this one, yeah. Okay, and the final game, GWS hosts the Bullies over in Sydney. I'm going to tip the underdog this one. I think the Doggies are in great form. I think if they had been in this form for the whole season, they would be a great shout for a top four. So I'm going to tip the upset, go the Doggies in this one. Yeah, I like it. Cool, mate. All right, so that looks like we've set up some semifinals. Uh, So you tipped... Uh, Collingwood to win so Geelong will host West Coast at the MCG and the other game is Richmond hosting the Doggies so let's start with uh, Geelong and West Coast at the MCG this is a really tough one West Coast have been my flag fancies for the whole year personally I think they are the best team but Geelong you know they've had a great season and you really can't discount that you know I'm gonna go off a whim I really could call this one either way I'm gonna actually tip West Coast Whew, that would be an absolute cracking result if uh, my boys get up in that game. What about in this the other semi? You've got Richmond hosting the Doggies at the MCG. As much as I said I love the Doggies, this is the one where I see just the hurdle being just too high. You know, Richmond, they're a great outfit. You're going to have to go with Richmond on this one. Okay, so that sets up some preliminary blockbusters. Um, I think that means Brisbane hosts West Coast at the Gabba. Um, so who are you thinking for that one? Again, Really tough one. I'm super torn with this one. Being at the Gabba, I'm gonna have to go. Gonna have to go Brisbane and put them into a grandy for the first time in 17 years or something. Yeah, 16. Yeah. West Coast have been my uh, yeah flag fancies all year, but no, nah, I can't can't not tip Brisbane at the Gabba. Okay, and in the other prelim, you've got a rematch of last year, and it's Richmond and Collingwood going head to head at the MCG. Last year, Collingwood, you know, they shocked the footy world when they won this game. Unfortunately for Collingwood, I think this year they're going to be on the losing end of that game. And I pick Richmond to go into their second grandy in three years. All right, you stinky warlord. So that has actually set up a grand final of Richmond and Brisbane. Now, before we go down that route, I'm going to take you through the traditional sort of um, way to do it. And we're going to have the Brownlow medal prediction right now, which happens right before the grandy. So um, tell us um, maybe a couple contenders, but who, who do you think is going to win overall? Probably This year is probably one of the hardest years in recent memory. Uh, for mind, you know, last last year it was pretty obvious, I think, to everyone that Tom Mitchell was going to be the guy. Um, this year there could be any number of guys, you know, uh, Pat Cripps, he's had an outstanding year, Lockie Neal, Marcus Bontempelli, Brody Grundy. I'm actually going to pick my own boy with this one. I think Nat Fife is going to get the win. Collingwood, West Coast, they're going to share, share votes around. It's a bit of a cliche to say that but it's true. I think Danger's going to get a lot of votes stolen from Tim Kelly. I think he's going to go really well. I think he'll get a lot of ones and twos. But I th- I personally, I think there's quite a few games where Tim Kelly tipped him for best on ground. Personally, I think Fife's best is better than anyone in the AFL. And I think he's going to do enough to get his second round. Yeah, nice one. That would be a pretty good consolation for Freo fans in an otherwise disappointing season. Um, But all right, so Fife takes home the Charlie and it's time for Brisbane to play Richmond at the MCG, a rematch of their round 23 clash. Um, Tell us, who do you think is going to win the flag? I think the 2019 grand final winner is going to be the Richmond Tigers. Super impressive back half of the year for Richmond. I probably thought they might have been a little bit cooked at some stages this year, but I think when they turn the form on, they're, yeah, they're as good as anyone. Have to pick Richmond. I'd like to see Brisbane do it, but yeah, Richmond. Yeah, fair enough. Well, that, yeah, those are pretty interesting predictions. I think if Brisbane made the grand final, a lot of people would be uh, probably getting on them as the underdog. Uh, it's been a real good sort of story from them, a revival story. Before we finish up, you've given us Nat Five to win the brown load. Richmond's going to win the flag. Finally, give us a verdict because this is the one, this is the question people really want to know okay who is the better rising star candidate out of Sam Walsh and Connor Rosie pretty pretty tough on this one two great first year players you know I think Connor Rosie's kicked what 29 30 goals Sam Walsh I think he's broken the disposal record for a first year player I'm going to give the award to Sam Walsh who knows what will happen long term um, I generally like to favor players that do have scoreboard impact and I think that's actually an area of Sam Walsh's game that he he will need to pick up if he wants to get to that 
elite, elite category, but, you know, 25 disposals a game in your first year is frankly ridiculous. There is that many players go through their whole career without averaging numbers like that. You know, to be an 18-year-old kid, one of the best runners in the AFL already, contested possessions, uncontested possessions. If he cleans up his ball use a little bit, has a bit more scoreboard impact, we could be seeing an absolute gem here. Yeah, nice one, man. Oh, cool. Well, that was all very well summed up. Sam Walsh for the Rising Star, Nat Fire for the Brownlow, and Richmond are your premiers. Oh, we didn't go um, Norm Smith medalist. Oh, gee. Well, that one's so hard to pick, isn't it? Yeah. Just, no, no, tell um, me. I'm going to go Bashar Hooley. Someone yeah, a bit right. different. Yeah, well, he probably should have won it in 2017, if you ask me. Who knows? I was so drunk when I watched that game, so I could be wrong. Cool, man. Joycey, it's been good having you again on the True Footy YouTube channel. Uh, for those watching, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe. We're going to do plenty of AFL content, particularly as we get into the finals, and then even more when we get into the draft, as that is my favorite time of the year, and, uh, you know, trading as well. So, Joycey, it's been real. Thanks for having us, and uh, make sure you go tell all your friends to subscribe to the True Footy YouTube channel. I sure will, Jesse. Cheers, mate. Thanks, mate. I'll catch you later. See ya.